Early in the morning on opening day of the waiting period for the Western Australia Margaret River Pro, the Red Bull Athlete Zone is filling up. The drama of the mid-season cut right upon us. Reigning world champ all smiles early in the morning. And Bronte McCauley getting familiar with the CT locker room once again. And Tati preparing for this beautiful sunrise and what could be a big day at Margaret River Main Drink. The World Surf League travels west to Margaret River for the fifth stop on the 2024 Championship Tour, the Western Australia Margaret River Pro. At stop number four, it was an American double as rookie Cole Hauschman and second year superstar Caitlin Simmers rang the bell. Now in Margaret River, world class waves intertwined with wineries and wondrous landscapes. But even in paradise, the pressure of the mid-season cut looms over those trying to keep their dream alive. Who will rise? The stage is set for elation and relegation at the 2024 Western Australia Margaret River Pro. Good morning and welcome to Dawn Patrol for stop number five of the World Surf League Championship Tour, the Western Australia Margaret River Pro. On the show today, we're going to focus on the favorites and who could win the event here in 2024. Also, looking at Tyler Wright, can she bounce back after a heartbreaking loss at Bells when she was looking to three-peat? And with the mid-season cut on her back, a lot of the tour will be under pressure once again here at stop number five. We'll focus in on the cut line and see the rookies, the big names, the legends, even world champions that need a big result here at the fifth stop of the season. Beautiful morning sunrise. How about that look at main break? What a beautiful part of the world. We are so lucky to be here. Felicity, thanks for having us. Felicity Palmatier, I'm Joe Trapel, Richie Lovett. Flick, gosh, it must feel great to be home. Oh, it's good to sleep in my own bed, and it's no secret I am the proudest West, o West Aussie there is. And it's a beautiful part of the world, and I'm stoked that the tour is here, and it's such going to be such an exciting event. Oh, uh, Richie Lovett, you've got a lot of nicknames. Some I can't say on television. <laughs> but uh, one of my favorites is W.A. Rick. Yeah. Uh, you have a... A lot of happiness when you come to this part of the world. What does this place do to you? Uh, mate, there's an energy about this place. There's no doubt about it. You know, you, it, it's raw. You know, you're really connected to nature. And there's a lot of good wineries around <laughs> here too, mate. And I don't mind a drop. Gosh, I feel like we could have a big day. <laughs> uh, one of our favorite Aussies, Stace Galbraith, is standing by with our commissioner, Jesse Miley Dyer, for the update today. Thanks, Joe. Jess, good to see you. Good to see you. Happy to be back in the West. Yeah, absolutely. It's a beautiful morning. Um, you know, there's something about coming down here and you, you have that amazing sunrise and there's that you, those pinks never get old. Good in the afternoon too. Yeah, always. <laughs> what are we going to do today? <laughs> um, so we've got a big day planned actually. Um, we're going to be here, we're starting with the women's opening round and going straight into the men's. We know that today is probably the best day we've got in a few. Um, the forecast looks pretty good for the event for sure. There's no real significant swells that we're looking at. Um, at the moment, there's not really any chance for the box, which I know was a big conversation last year and I know people will be bummed about, but you always get that option to for it to change. So today we're gonna to be on, it's a big day and um, yeah, we're excited to get started. And with the uh, size of the swell today and the conditions on hand, what do you think the uh, the commissioner's office is gonna be looking for? Yeah, so, you know, the what's really important for us in the judging tower um, after Luli's actually just sent out all these notes to the, the surfers this morning, is those combinations of turns. You know, we know that the swell today is not so big, but there are going to be some critical sections. And, you know, there's specific sections on this wave where you have that uh, opportunity to have the critical manoeuvre. You know, we look at the bricks, we look at people, you know, trying to get those those end turns. So we, we definitely want to see combinations. 
and then when we're thinking about progression there's kind of two options right we've got those ability and the option to have those single huge maneuvers but also we've been talking about progression with the group this year and the idea of drawing new lines and you know kind of testing what's possible out here at main break that's going to be something that we're looking for too yeah i think even at this size we're going to see some great action thanks joe Good man, Stace. Thank you to our commissioner, Jesse Miley Dyer, as Kelly Slater checks out the conditions this morning. The greatest of all time, breaking it all down with Lakey Peterson and Lakey's husband, Thomas. He's actually talking about his surgery that he, he had last September, <laughs> as now we bring up uh, the Surfline forecast for this event. Flick. Yeah. Local knowledge, what are you seeing in this <laughs> forecast? Well, forecast right now, we've obviously woken up this morning. We've got a little southwest swell. It might hold, yeah, it's holding through a little bit today. What might come into factor later on about lunchtime is just the wind. That's one thing that's sort of picking my ears up. Usually around lunchtime here, that southwest wind sort of fills in. But later on in the waiting period, we are going to have a bit more of a swell. It's going to drop off during the weekend, but Monday, Tuesday, further in the, on in the waiting period is looking promising. As we look at today, four to six foot faces, so real rippable main break today. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's uh, super rippable out there, contestable conditions, four to six foot faces. That'll hold throughout the day and, and beautiful offshore groomed waves today, uh, this morning, but then a little bit sideshore and onshore this afternoon. We'll keep an eye on that, but that's air wind to me. That spills <laughs> air and progression. As we look at the next uh, four days, it gets a little bit smaller, Flick. Yeah, it's going to get smaller than today, and uh, in my books, that's going to be pretty hard to run something out here at main break. But so maybe a couple of days off, but there's something uh, down the pipeline. Monday, Tuesday is looking mm. promising. There we go. Big start. It's on opening day, kicking off in just a matter of moments as we talk about who's in and who's out. When you look at the opening round, heat draw, George Batar. You. The legend from Manly Beach who really put together some big turns and bells. He's back for more against the CT. Otis North winning the trials representing Yelling up 17 years of age in the main event. Bronte McCauley, that is just a household name globally, but especially at this event. Her whole family's been in this event over the years. She's back coming through a, a big win in the trials over Willow Hardy. And also, Joao Chianca still injured, still wishing him the best on his road to recovery. Heard he's in the water, getting some waves again. His replacement, Reef Hazelwood. Not just a fly boy, he big airs, but he's also really powerful and dangerous here at Main Break Margaret River because he's had a nice performance in the past at the CT level. Much more to come on the Dawn Patrol show today, and we'll be focusing on this man, the rookie, who just had the biggest breakthrough win of his entire career. More on that right after this on Dawn Patrol. What an event it was at Bells Beach for this goofy foot rookie from San Clemente, California. Went into this event 26th in the world with a win. Moves up to number eight in the world and officially has made the cut. Taking down his heroes from Medina to Ewing to Igarashi to his best friend and mentor, world number one, Griffin Cola Pinto, all San Clemente final, all mayhem final, and everything just changed this year on tour for Cole Hausman. But what a year it's been. Going back to last March, wins a QS to qualify for the Challenger Series with his fifth at Barbados. That helped, then went back to back on the CS, getting the win in North Narrabeen over Jacob Wilcox into a win in Bolito. The man was absolutely on fire. Then to be a part of the rookie class, not have the best start the first three stops of the season and picks up a big win. I mean, what a year it's been for Cole Hausman. It's absolutely nothing short of amazing. When it, It's incredible, really. I can't believe it's only taking him four events on tour to get the big win and at what an event, so iconic the bell it's amazing and I think when he came on to tour though everyone was sort of rubbing their hands together excited to see what he had and it just wasn't kind of coming to fruition so to finally see it now I'm excited for the rest of the years obviously made the cut now he's jumped 18 places on the rankings can't wait for the rest of the year good to point. see Cole. good point I mean Rich where do we go from here after a big momentous win like that uh, well, the one thing that's going to happen now is he's going to have a lot of focus and attention on him. He's gone from sort of nowhere into the spotlight, so we'll see how he handles that pressure. But, uh, yeah, for me, underperformed at the start of this year. And as you said, Flick, now he's found some momentum. Uh, the surfing's always been there. 
And uh, sometimes that win can get infectious, you know, and you can start to get on a bit of a winning roll. So anything's possible, certainly suited to the waves here at Margaret's. Well, now, now let's check out the epic men's rankings with a big move for Cole. 18 spots up to world number eight, right ahead of his good friend, Crosby Cole de Pinto. How she now leading the rookie of the year race here into stop number five. Jordy, top 10 spot. Officially, if you're in this top 10 picture, you've officially made the mid-season cut. Kanoa to seven. Bear Mamiya just outside the final five now, but still in a great position at world number six. Jack Robinson didn't get to defend his event title last year. He still feels like last time he was here competing, he won. He's looking very focused and comfortable. Big one there for California. Jake Marshall, world number four. John three. Griffin still leading in the yellow. Richie, who is the one to watch as a favorite to win Margaret River? Uh, for me, when I think of Margaret River in all its glory, there's only one man, uh, John John Florence. Uh, this guy has redefined power surfing out at this event, you know. He is now the benchmark. He's the yardstick to which all surfers at Margaret River are rated. Um, you know, he, he changed surfing and the way that you can just annihilate, carve a wave to pieces. Uh, you know, it, it's not only this power game that this guy has though, he's got an incredible air game as well. Uh, he just feels that raw power and energy of this place. Uh, to me, he's one of the, the, the people to really watch. You know what? I just cannot go past Jack Robinson. I mean, how can you not? He's born and bred here, absolutely knows every single inch of this reef. He also is incredible at the box. Don't know if we'll see the box this event just with the conditions we've got, but he's actually looking to sort of defend a title here. The last time he was here, he won in 2022. He didn't quite have the event, uh, the result he wanted at Bells, you know, last week. And I just feel like it's completely within his wheelhouse out here today. And as we see, this warm-up surf from Jack Robbo this morning, looking silky smooth on that sharp eye. Bit smaller right there, but look at him form. Yeah, looks really comfortable. I think he's happy to be back home in the West. He said he went straight to the point here to watch the sunset when he got into town and his good friend, Bronte McCauley, going back to back, which has been great to see them through the press conferences, representing the West so well in the main event. Uh, it's like you said, Jack put on a master class of the box and beat Felipe Toledo a couple of years ago. But with him really refining his rail game over the last couple of years, he's shown he could win anywhere. It doesn't have to be the box. It could be main break. And he's looking for another win out here to protect his home court. Up next on Don Patrol, we're going to focus on the final five picture for the women. And we'll see how the wild card Bronte ends up trying to upset that picture in this event. We'll be right back. Yeah. Absolutely charging. Betty Lou has dreamed of this. This is history being made right now. Caroline Marks, six years on the championship tour. She's already won a world title at just 21 years old. On a bomb mark, bang. And what? a fourth section standing up for her. Molly Picklum locks in. She's still going and gets the exit. What? Banging that one way up top. To be fair, a lot of older women would have been dreaming of that for women surfing. We talk so much about the new school, talk about the veterans. Joanna Faye is the champion. She can almost do anything. The magnitude of her performance, stuff we've never seen in surfing history. Katie Simmers is your champion. Let's look at the current final five. Into stop number five, young Katie Simmers, the 18-year-old phenom from Oceanside in the yellow jersey after that sudden death win on the buzzer over Joanne DeFay at Bells Beach. She talked about it very articulately on the press conference as she had some time to digest what had happened. She just said, you have to believe in yourself in an entire heat. If you got seconds on the clock, you can rise and take a huge win. I think it was a huge moment for her to realize her potential on tour. Joe Trapel with Flick and Richie Lovett. Uh, the big thing there outside of the final five picture is a big name absent, Tyler Wright the most decorated athlete on tour. With Steph and Chris stepping away, you're looking to her to really be owning this season so far. And right now she's eighth in the world after being upset by Ellie Harrison at Bells Beach. But when we focus on Margaret River, she's one of the greats. A win out here in the past in nine events, she's got a 73% winning percentage. 
one of the most dominant competitors in, in Margaret River Pro history. Coming in here, I guess, with something to prove. You know, number eighth in the world. Nobody really saw that coming. Definitely not. Uh, you know what? When I, even if I think back to Bells, I th actually think she was in really good form. She just came up in the, uh, up against Ellie Harrison, who was a little bit better form than her. But, you know, Tyler's been coming to Margaret River since she's been a teenager. She's won an Australian title out here. She surfed out here when it was a qualifying series event. She undoubtedly probably got the, some of the most experience on tour out here. It's her rail game out here, her ability to adapt to a different conditions, her forehand grab rail carve that we've seen her go to so many times. I, that one right there, I just seriously think that, you know, it's not over for Tyler. I feel like a, a big result is possibly on the way. Richie, anything to worry about there for Tyler Wright? Uh, no, I don't think there's anything to worry about. As Flick said, there's just so much experience and knowledge there. She's been coming here for so long, but I don't know. There's something about me that actually <laughs> likes seeing these, you know, experienced surfers, these world champions under a little bit of pressure. They haven't, you know, not having everything their own way. So I, I love seeing how they rise to the occasion. They really dig in and, and get the work, job done. And I think she will get the job done. Awesome. Awesome. Well, coming up next on the show, we're really going to focus on the mid-season cut. We've tried to avoid talking about it all season, but we're here. Stop number five. You've got to be in the top 22 for the men or the top 10 for the women. As Lakey looks on with her coach, Glenn Micro Hall. Be right back. It is a gorgeous morning here in Main Break. The contest is on for the opening round. 35 minute heat starting with the women. Molly Picklum, Luana Silva, Alyssa Spencer will be out there in about five minutes. So we're about to start opening day looking clean and rippable. The thing is, we got to focus on the rankings because now's the time to make the cut for the top 10 for the women, top 22 for the men as we check out the women's rankings. A lot of different stories throughout the year. The, the young, Youthful movement that kicked off the Hawaiian leg of the tour, kind of switched gears with Joanne DeFay stepping up and kind of really representing the established guard so well. As now world number two right behind Katie, as that was the Bells final. Pick them down to third, Caroline fourth, but the hot seat is the midseason cut. Lakey Peterson, she's felt it before where she was under pressure to perform. Sawyer's a rookie on tour right behind Lakey. Bella Nichols has had the best day of her career and the worst in this format here at Margaret River Main Break. Veterans like Sally, Alyssa Spencer, India Robinson. And it's wild when you look at, you know, history of this event, the past winners in the draw. You've got six past Margaret River Pro champions and only one has officially made the cut. When you think about that flick, who's the one surfer that's really standing out that's going to make a big impact in this event? For me, it's Tachi. I, I feel like she's right there. She's in number seven. She's pre had a pretty good year. I mean, two fifths, a third, and she's won out here before. She's on her backhand, point of difference. It always looks really critical on the right. So you have that ability to get really tight in the pocket. And she also has that in her where if it gets big and consequential, she's going. It's interesting as well. That's a great pick because she loves this venue too. Really feels the power of the West. When you look at the Australians, Rich, like Isabella Nichols, who has won here, Sally, who's the veteran with all kinds of experience. I mean, out of yep. those two specifically, who's really going to step up in your mind? Uh, for me, it's Sally. I think she's put in some in inspiring performances out here at, at Margaret River. She's had a win out here before. Uh, she knows the break. She's been coming here since she was a little kid, you know, competing at, at, at all different levels. So, um, you know, Sally is one of the most tenacious, determined <laughs> women on the planet when it comes to sporting uh, events. And, you know, and this is... This is her field. Um, I just don't think we've seen the best of Sally this year, and I feel like this event, under pressure, she might produce something special. Great calls, you guys. Also, the men's cuts looking pretty intense as we focus on the bubble. Remember, it's the 22 mark. Gentile just a spot ahead. Ramsey, two spots ahead. Medina, huge name. That's number 20 in the world. And on the other side of it, Cade moved up dramatically after the quarters at Bells. He's 23rd in the world. You've got the Poopo brothers tied on points. Sammy just a step of him on a tie break. And a lot of big rookies, huge names like Kelly, also down to 33rd in the world. Big moment here to really step up and 
make an impact, Richie. Who's it, who's it going to be? Uh, well, so far, no joy for Jacob Wilcox, but he might find it here. Home break, he's back in the West. Uh, you know, I feel like he's underperformed since he's made the, the championship tour and, uh, well, he needs to kick into gear and I'd love to see Jacob just uh, climb up the ladder there and pull himself out of a hole. Big one here for WA for yep. Jacob Wilcox. Rookie this time, not a wild card in the past. A great choice there. What about you, Flick? Oh, obviously, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly with Rich. I think it's within Jacob's wheelhouse. But when I look at that, I see Cade and I feel like, you know, he's coming off a quarterfinal finish, which is his best result so far on tour. He's got Jake here in his corner, who's obviously from Western Australia, knows this break so well, has coached so many people out here to great. And I just, I think Cade's got great momentum coming from Bells. As looking at him just right now, coming in from a free surf. But yeah, I feel like he's going to continue that momentum. He's got a good crew of people around him. And yeah, my pick's Cade. He also just has this demeanor about him where he's not being haunted by scenarios. He seems like he can pick himself back up even after a tough loss. I always think that's such a positive when you're new to the tour. It can be so overwhelming, and I think Cade's been rising through that this year. Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, you know, it, it does take a couple of years to get things going. You can be sort of overwhelmed by the situation of, of being uh, on the tour and competing with your heroes, people you lo looked up to, but he's, he's starting to settle into his position. Richie, enjoy your morning. Thank you, mate. He'll let you go roam around the field. <laughs> awesome. Talk to the coaches. Enjoy WA. We're going to get ready for a big start for the opening round for the women.